Hi, I'm Doug the Bee Guy, and welcome to the Double Nucleus series. Today we're going to be talking about the equipment that we're going to be using and how to make it. First thing I want to say is I in no way want to take credit for this design or any of the things that I'm going to teach you in this series because I learned it all from Michael Palmer by watching all of his videos over and over again, trying different things. And so all the techniques, except for the stuff that I've created, are all from him. And I want to give him total credit and I'll put some links down to the videos and the training that he gives. So let's get started. So the thing I like about this system is that it's a standard hive body and so you can use uh, standard equipment like the telescoping hive cover is the standard size. Um, let's take those off for a second. The bottom is a standard hive body commercial design that I bought and put together and then I inserted a three quarter inch board in the middle and um, before you put it together, you just use a dado blade and make a slot and you can slide it right in there. Um, if you don't have a fancy table saw, I don't have one, I have an old one, but I can show you how to do that by just putting the board in between there and nailing it. You don't need to put the groove in there if you just want to try this. You don't have a bunch of fancy equipment. These uh, little nuke boxes on top were just made by sawing a commercially made box in half. And then after it was put together and then adding another piece of wood on the side and drilling a top entrance in it. And that's all that was done to this equipment. And I'll show you how to make it all, but it's very basic. Each one of these holds four frames with a little bit of room. And the bottom also holds four and four with a little bit of room so you can get the frames in and out. With this three quarter inch piece of wood, you can't do five and five, but it's fine because four and four is fine and it gives you some room on the outside. The bees tend to fill that outside with a little bit more honey on that frame. Gives them a little bit more food in the winter time to overwinter. And so this is the um, form factor that I overwinter uh, my hives in like this with uh, two over two and uh, they overwinter well. Sometimes, as you'll see in my videos, I do what's called the brood factory. Michael calls those brood factories when you do three levels and that, that's a massive amount of bees and you're taking continuously taking out brood and using it in your other hives or to make more nucleus colonies. And we'll talk about all of those different things. But right now I just wanted to go over the equipment and uh, show you the basic stuff. And now I'm gonna show you how to make it and then you'll be able to use it. And the bottom board is also a standard kind of bottom board. The only difference with this one is it has a cleat down the center so that uh, you can keep the nucleus colony separate and the queen separate. And we also usually put an entrance reducer in these so that the opening is very small. Um, this one's not quite finished, but again, standard kind of thing with the cleat in the center. We'll show you also how to make that. Okay, to make the side-by-side uh, -side nuke box, um, I start with a standard hive body. And uh, all I do is take the two sides and uh, cut a three-quarter inch dado blade, dado uh, joint with the dado blade, so that I can slip a nine and five-eighths high board that's three quarter of an inch down the center of it. So that's what we're gonna do right now. To make one of those, we have our pieces right here, our standard hive pieces, two long sides, which we don't do anything to, and two short sides that we put the three quarter inch groove down the center. This is the center line. And what you want for the groove is you want it to be this depth, that your frame rest depth. You want it to be um, three, three eighths of an inch so that it goes all the way and butts up against this piece because that becomes a separator for the bees on this side and that side. So you want it to go all the way up to the top so that it separates. If you just go in a little bit, then there's a little a little walkway through here that the bees can cross over. And so you don't want to do that you want to make sure that uh, your piece of wood butts up against like that. It doesn't leave a gap. So we're going to go three eighths of an inch deep and we have our dado set for three quarters of an inch and we're going to cut those grooves right now. We've got our lines marked. 
Got a guide line on this side that I'm going to line up. And we've got our depth set to 3 eighths of an inch. So we're going to cut these grooves. <laughs> it up so that that center line is right down the center. second and that's kind of what you want so there you get a good seal let's cut this other one line it up the center line Measured everything correctly, you should get something that looks like that. It's pretty close to a, both of them are pretty close. They might be a tad off, but by the time you get everything assembled, and as long as they're not uh, way off, they'll be fine. So, before you assemble it, you should check, make sure that your groove three quarters of an inch and that your uh, center board is going to fit in there just like that so now the next thing we have to do is to create the uh, centerpiece that divides the uh, hive body into two pieces so this is the piece that we now need to create and all this is is a two by uh, ten piece of pine that's ripped down or actually two by twelve because two by tens aren't uh, aren't big enough so it's a piece of two by twelve that you want to cut so that it's nine and five eighths inches deep and then measure this dimension And it's best to do that uh, after you put the box together. So we'll put the box together and then we'll, uh, we'll insert this piece because we need to measure that after the box is put together. Okay, so we've got our box uh, put together. And now we're gonna measure this uh, inside board. And it's 19 and a half. That's what it's coming out to be. Let's check it again. Measure twice, cut once. 19 and a quarter, not 19 and a half. It's always better if you wear your glasses when you're trying to read these. So we got 19 and an eighth and 19 and two eighths. So 19 and a quarter looks to be just about right so we want a board that's 19 and a quarter eight 19 and a quarter inches long by nine and five eighths inches deep because that's the standard depth of your hive bodies nine and five eighths you want it to be level across the top so that it seals the two compartments so i've got my piece of uh, one by 12 that is a leftover from some other pieces that I made and I have made these uh, these boxes from scratch but now I don't have the time so I just buy the pre-made boxes and add the parts and it just seems to work better for me but if you want to make them from scratch you totally can do that and then just add this stuff on that I'm showing you how to do 
So um, our measurement was 19 and a quarter. So we want to allow one eighth of an inch for the blade. And that's always important to remember. And since I'm not a serious woodworker all the time, I always have to remind myself to do that. So, so this will be uh, 19 and a quarter inches when I cut it. And then we'll cut it down to nine and five eighths inches after we cut this part. And I did change this blade from the three quarter inch dado back to a regular single table saw blade, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> I have forgotten to do that too, and it'll work just fine. It's just, uh, it chews up a lot more of your wood and uh, can dull your dado blade faster by cutting more than you really need it to do. So I'm just gonna get this lined up square it up first before we get going that looks to be about right So there's our board. And now we just have to cut the width to nine and five eighths. We can check it if we want to check it to make sure that it fits. It's a little tight, so we'll probably have to shave off of just a tiny bit, but not a problem. There's nine and five eighths, and you can make a line here and then saw that all the way. But a better way to do that is to use your fence, get some more, much more accurate cut, and that's the way I normally do it. So I'm going to find my fence here, wherever it is, buried in the junk pile. Here we go. Attach that and. Get a nine and five eighths measurement right here. Right there. All right, so now we can just run that board and not even worry about our line and all of that. It's a lot better way to do it than uh, trying to draw a line all the way down here and just kind of eyeball it. This is a better way. This is the whole point of a table saw. So you don't have to do that kind of stuff. All right, let's run it through and see what we got here. This side doesn't seem to be as straight. Oh, there's a little bit of a bow in this board. That's probably why it didn't fit before in the other piece, but it'll all work out. None of this wood is perfect. So now we have uh, our board. 
nine and five eighths inches deep by 19 and a quarter. Take our fence off. And let's try to see if it fits again. Obviously, it's not any shorter than it was before, so. And we'll probably have to uh, make it, but I want to make sure that it's the right height. So you can check that right there. You can see that it's exactly the right height. And now it's just a little bit, it's a hair big. I actually think it might be a little bit of an angle here. So we'll just snip off like a blade width or not even. The, uh, you could do something like that where you just you get it right next to the blade and you push it up against there and you hold that point actually was like a half a blade width and you could do that on both sides shaved off barely any on both sides just to see uh, if we can sneak up on it a little bit it's better to go slow than to take too much off and here my thing came apart because it's not totally together yet but it's close See how we're gonna fit now. There we go. That's what you're looking for. So now you want to finish putting your high body together and if see if that's too big, you can shave it again. But that's kind of the idea. Okay, so we have our uh box and it's been assembled now with glue and nails solid and now we try to fit our board in and of course it's a little too big it's that's eh, close but it's a little too tight and you could get it in there but like why fight with it let's just uh, shave off a 30 second of it or so and it'll fit right in there after that Let's put this aside, get our little fence. Okay. Now let's get a test fit and see how it's going to fit. Still a little tight. Let 
There we go. It's level. And that's what you're looking for right there. You want that to be nice and level there, and you want it to be closed in here so that the beast can't go from side to side. And that's really the most important thing. Level and level on the bottom so that when you put your bottom board on here, you don't want this to ride up on the center and then it'll rock on your bottom board. So that's it. Now you can uh, glue it, screw it, staple it, or just leave it. You saw how what a good fit that is. You could just leave it just like that, and then you could pop it out later. Um, like I said, it'll propolize, the bees will propolize that, but if you wanted to pop this one out and use this for a 10 frame hive someday, you'd have to cover up those holes or you could just leave them and the bees would use them as entrances. But that's how you make the side-by-side -side nuke bottom. And in the next uh, video, we'll show you how to make the uh, two top pieces and the bottom board. So here we have a box um, without the groove and we want to make a side-by-side -side nucleus bottom. And if you don't have all that equipment, you'll be able to cut a piece of wood and slide it down in here without making that groove. But what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to cut some wood to fill that little groove. So when you butt that piece of wood up, there's gonna be a little space here. So you're gonna have to make a little three quarter inch spacer piece and glue it in there um, so that the bees can't cross over. So we're gonna measure our box inside here, inside dimensions, and we don't wanna measure here because that's not worth the piece of wood that we want. We want a piece from inside below the frame rest to inside below the frame rest on this side, and it looks to be 18 and 3 eighths. Let's see, one, two, three, 18 and 3 eighths. Actually be better to measure it on the bottom because on the bottom, you have no frame rest. So here we go, we can see that it is actually 18 and 3 eighths, maybe 18 and 3 eighths and a hair bigger than that. So let's uh, set this aside and mark a piece. We have our uh, leftover piece of one by 12 here. And this is the uh, thing that we're gonna be cutting on. 18 and three eighths in just a little bit. So there's three eighths. So this is for a piece that will fit inside without a fancy groove. So this is just fast and dirty. If you want to try this, you have some 10 frame box and you want to try it and you don't necessarily know. And there's nothing wrong with doing it this way, you know. They, uh, the equipment will be just fine. It'll work just fine this way. It's just a little more secure the other way, but you can nail and glue it this way also and then going to be fine. So we're just going to line that up. And give it a cut. Let's see how close of a cut we got here. And still quite a bit, uh, you can put it in this way and then pound it, but you might break your box. It's not close enough. It needs to be pretty close to, you can see it's quite a bit, uh, quite a bit bigger than it needs to be there. 
so we'll just sneak up on it and uh, until we get something that uh, fits pretty good in there. There we go. So that's exactly what we're looking for, something like that. It fits, it's tight, it has a good seal, there's not a gap. And then we can just put two screws or a nail and you don't need a fancy groove. All we have to do is cut this to nine and five eighths. Okay, we're gonna rip this down to nine and five eighths. And if you don't have a table saw, you could easily do this with a circular saw. So there you go, it's a little high on this side, so we'll trim that off, you can see my line, my square must not be set properly, but that's what you want to do, you want to get this in here, and uh, you're going to have to find something to, uh, to block that, a little piece of wood, you could cut some stuff with a hand chisel, or you could, uh, I would probably look for something that you could buy easily, like a, this yardstick. Like a couple pieces of yardstick would stuck in there and smashed in there would work. So that's, that's just, you know, you're gonna have to figure that out. Um, I'm not gonna play with that because I use the, the tool to make a groove, but I just wanted to do that for some people who don't have a table saw show you that you can definitely put this in here and uh, fill this uh, with some little piece of wood scrap it's not a big deal I've got some actual here's some pieces of a uh, frame bar frame bar that holds the hold your wax in you can put a couple pieces of that in there looks like that might be just about perfect two pieces of that stuck in there so it just has to be three eighths inch deep and enough to fill that little gap. All right, so in the next episode, we're gonna show you how to make the top pieces and the bottom board, and then you'll have a complete uh, double nucleus uh, set for making these colonies and overwintering them. Until next time, be extraordinary. Well, if you'd like to become a better beekeeper, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.